Okay, we're back again. Thank you for watching this video. Let's change these titles. It current, currently says sales forecast. Let's change that to expenses forecast. And it says product A. Let's just delete that. And then we have business and personal financial support. That's fine. It's that business name, business heading. Let's move this across. Merge and center twice. Bring it into the center with the subtitle. And then let's add a title here above our expense categories. So from DE3 across to miscellaneous, merge and center. And let's just put expenses. Okay. We now need to enter another formula ALAM. 5 equals sum, open bracket. This time we're going to total all the expenses for the month. This is January year one, drag across, DE5 to the end, close bracket, click enter, then we should drag that down, right down to the bottom, like so. If you highlight AL, right click, format cells, border, add a border to the left now, click OK. Because we've merged cells, you may then just have to highlight the merge cells, format cells, try again, there we go. So let's enter the information for year one. So we have product A, and you'll get this expense information from the sales forecast. Now it could be for the first month of trading that we want to order quite a few products to have some in stock and then we'll order them per the sales forecast. So we may order 10 products at 10 pounds each say for our first month. And then we're planning to only sell two, then three, then four as the months go on. So then we will order for our needs. Um, so in February, let's put 20, then 30, 40, 50. I'm putting these in pounds and in whole pounds, just say these products that we're buying are 10 pounds each. 70, 70. And you'll see as I'm entering this information, it's appearing as a total here and it's also appearing as a month total here and our annual total. In January we are putting a lot of money into marketing and hopefully we'll be selling a lot more of product A. So let's enter that marketing information now. So we have to pay £500 the end of year one, then 500 to start it off. And perhaps there's a couple more hundred we have to pay later on in the year for this marketing campaign that we're running. So these can now go up accordingly. I'm just making this up as I go along. Obviously, you'll have research data that you're entering here and it won't be made up on the spot. Now it's important that if you're taking these forecasts to some sort of investor or loan provider, and even for yourself, that you know what these figures are. It's great when you create this forecast to think, okay, this is the marketing campaign, but it's not as easy to remember all the information that's on this spreadsheet once it's created. So if you right click, click insert comment, you can then enter marketing campaign with and then enter the, the company so advertising 
limited and I'm just making this up okay and you can make notes for all these sums and what they are referring to so let's just finish this off and I'll do the same for product B okay so I've entered the same for product B and once again you can make notes you'll see this jumps up in year two you can make a note right click insert note and say C marketing column or something like that office rent could be that we're paying 120 pound a month fixed so just drag that down 120 that's not going to change It could also be, as mentioned in the sales forecast, that one of these products has a planned rise at some point. So make sure that is reflected in the forecast and that you put prices up accordingly in the right month and year. Office supplies could be that we have researched that we need about £45 to stock up on office supplies and then perhaps £10 every other month. Like so. And you can carry on finishing that off. Postage, packaging, wages, accounting fees. It'll be boring and a waste of time for me just to record a video of me filling these in. I think this is all self-explanatory. But you can see that these totals are adding at the bottom for each category for the year. Our totals for each month and then our grand total here. If you click format sales click border if you get a nice thick line click outline then we'll get that to stand out a bit as that is our grand total for the year so thick line outline and then again here okay that's looking good a couple of things to note you may need to buy a computer say at the beginning of trading and other office furniture you can enter that here make sure that you add notes to these new assets um, so if you enter two thousand pound in for year one month one instead of comments say five hundred pound computer five hundred pound desk and furniture and just break down that number bank interest if you're taking out a loan ensure the interest is calculated correctly and the interest should also drop as the loan payments are made things like loan payments are not an expense to the business so they won't be on the expense forecast but they will be on the cash flow statement which I'll be covering next bank charges a lot of banks offer free banking when you open an account with them for the first 12 months first 18 months sometimes the first 24 months so you might find that this is blank for a couple of years and then you start putting the cost in as with the sales forecast some of this is going to be guessing just use your common sense and make the best educated guess that you can but that's the expense forecast hopefully it's made a lot of sense um, in the next video i will show you this all filled out and i'll show you how to use the information from this template and the sales forecast to make a cash flow statement it's so important you have an expenses forecast one so you know what expenses to expect and how much but also you'll need this information to calculate your cash flow which is an essential when growing a business or starting a business because cash is king and i'll go into that in more depth in coming videos thank you for watching